Hey, what's up guys and how's it going? Welcome to my efficient 1 to 99 farming guide. So in this guide I will be going over in-depth information on the best way to level up your farming skill all the way from level 1 to level 99, spending as little time as possible on the skill itself. I will briefly cover some alternative methods, but I will mainly focus on time efficiency in this guide. I'm going to start off with the low levels of farming. Generally the best way to train farming is by planting trees, but you can't start planting trees until at least level 15. Before then, there are a few decent options. The first, and by far the most preferable method, is to do quests for experience. You can get straight from level 1 to level 35 farming without touching a single farming plot by just doing a few quests in the right order. Most quests are worth it to get done in the long run regardless, and these ones are extremely beneficial for low level farmers. Even if you don't feel like going through most of these quests, I would highly recommend that you at least do Fairy Tale Part 1 to get right to level 17. If you really don't feel like questing, or you have some kind of limits on your account that don't allow you to do these quests, the best way to do low level farming is probably to buy some bagged plants from the gardener in Falador and plant and replant them in the garden of your POH. It will cost somewhere around 80k to get to level 15 farming doing this, but it is relatively fast. Another option is to do the Sorceress's Garden minigame, which has thieving requirements for the different gardens. Higher level thieving would mean faster farming XP, but you would easily be able to get to level 15 in less than an hour doing this. If you want to take the straightforward approach, you can just rake patches and plant low level allotment and flower seeds, but this ends up being rather slow. From this point onwards, farming becomes a fairly simple and straightforward skill. The most efficient way to train it is simply to do tree runs every so often and focus on other things while waiting for them to grow. As your farming level increases, you'll be able to plant higher level trees, which in turn grant better experience. Some farming patches have certain requirements to access, and some achievement diaries have useful influences on the skill. For pure efficiency, you definitely want to consider working on the elven quest lines and starting Morning's End Part 1 as soon as possible, since this unlocks the fifth fruit tree patch in Letzia. It's very useful to complete the Grand Tree and Tree Gnome Village quests for easier access to the tree patches in the Gnome Stronghold and Tree Gnome Village areas. While having high requirements, it's also nice to complete the Falador Elite Diary eventually, since your Falador tree will never die when this is completed. If you are considering doing herb runs, you want to complete Priest in Peril and Ghosts Ahoy to get access to the Mauritania patch in the Ecto file. You want to complete My Arms Big Adventure to get access to the Disease Free patch on the Gnome Stronghold, and eventually you want to complete the Mauritania Elite Diary for access to the Herb Patch on Harmony Island. You definitely want to have Fairy Tale Part 1 done for the Magic Secateurs, as they increase your yield from all Herb and Allotment Patches by 10%. The Ardoin Diary is useful because you get teleports to the Ardoin Herb Patch, and the Kandarin Diary increases your yield from the Cathery Herb Patch more and more as you complete more of the Diary, up to 15% with the Elite Diary completed. Lunar Magics are also extremely useful for farming, these are unlocked by completing the Lunar Diplomacy quest. You can use the Fertile Soil spell to super compost your patches with magic instead of having to bring super compost in your inventory. This does require level 83 magic, but it's very useful if you have the level. It's not a necessity since you can just use regular super compost, but it definitely makes your farm runs a little bit simpler and a little bit easier. At level 65 farming, you can use the Geomancy spell, which allows you to see the status of all of your farming patches in the entire game. This comes in handy quite a bit because uh, if you don't know whether your trees are done or not, you can just check while you're standing at the bank rather than having to actually run over to the tree patches and check. Once in a while, trees take a little bit longer than you might expect, so it's nice to be able to check whenever. Another spell that comes in handy once in a while is the Cure Plant spell, unlock the level 66 magic on the Lunar Spellbook. You basically just use it to cure plants if they ever become diseased, which can come in handy once in a while. Alright, so by far the most efficient way to train your farming is just to do tree runs, as I said. The basic idea of a tree run is to teleport around the map to different plot locations and check health on your trees and then replant them. There are a ton of different options for teleportations to get to different locations. I will be showing you guys my tree run setup later in the guide, which is optimal, but if you don't have access to certain teleports that I do, then don't worry too much. There are lots of other good teleportation options. For the best efficiency, you should always plant the highest level trees that you can. Farming is a viable skill and is worth spending money on to get the best experience. It comes in at around 6 GP per XP with current prices, which means that 99 costs around 80 million GP. You can do it for cheaper than that with lower level trees, but it takes far longer and isn't at all worth it. If you're planning on to eventually max, you will get plenty of money from Runecrafting and Hunter to cover the cost. There are a total of 5 tree patches and 5 fruit tree patches around the map in the following locations. The 5 regular tree locations on RuneScape are Lumbridge west of the castle, Varok inside the castle walls, Falador in the Falador Park, Taverly in the southeast corner near the Balloon, and the Trinum Stronghold near Neve. For both of these, I will link in the description a old school wiki page where you'll be able to see all of the patch locations of every single type of patch, including a minimap image, but I figured I'd quickly go through these for you guys. The fruit tree locations are as follows Brimhaven near the docks, Letia near the bank, Trinum Stronghold near the agility course, the Trinum village outside of the maze, and Catherby on the eastern beach. 
There is one other tree that's very important to keep in mind, which is called the Kalkwat tree, which you can plant at level 72 farming. And this is in the Taibawana village on Karamja. You get about 12,000 experience for checking health on the Kalkwat tree. Kalkwat seeds are incredibly cheap because of Zolra, because there's so many in the game. And it takes about 21 hours to grow on average, so definitely start planting these as soon as you get to level 72, and you'll see that I incorporate this into my farm run. As I said, you can start off farming regular trees at level 15 with the oak tree. At level 30, you can move on to the willow tree. At 45, you can make maple trees. At 60, you can plant yew trees. And at 75, you can plant magic trees. You always should plant your best type of tree, so just as soon as you unlock the new type of tree, buy up those seeds and start planting those instead of your previous one. There are more types of fruit trees, but they start at a slightly higher level. At level 27, you can plant your first one, which is the apple tree. At 33, you get the banana tree. At 39, you get the orange tree. At 42, you get the curry tree. At 51, you get the pineapple tree. 57, the papaya tree. And finally, at level 68, you get the palm tree, which is what you'll be doing from then onwards. I would definitely recommend that you guys check out the wiki pages that I have linked in the description just for more information on the plant XP, harvest XP, stuff like that for the trees, and for the location if you want any more information. So definitely check those out if you want more information than what I provide on these slides. I just want to provide a quick overview. Another very useful resource is the Indecent Codes Farm Clock, which is a real-time farming clock that will show you when each type of crop is about to reach its next growth cycle. That is also linked in the description. The way all crops work is in growth cycles. Crops have certain stages of growth that take a certain amount of time to reach. On each growth tick, they have a chance of becoming diseased or growing, and if they become diseased, they don't grow and have a chance of dying on the next tick. All fruit trees have six 160-minute growth cycles, which means that they take a minimum of 16 hours to grow, and it takes longer if they get delayed by disease. Regular trees vary depending on the trees. Magic trees have 11 40-minute growth cycles for a minimum 7 hours 20-minute growth time. Lower level trees have fewer cycles, but always 40-minute cycles for regular, fruit, er, for regular trees. Farm ticks are actually extremely complicated, and even Mod Ash agrees that the farming code is terrifying. However, Etsk, the first person and only person currently to have Sumermill farming on Old School, has several very informative videos on the topic that I will link in the description if you want to learn more. Understanding the ins and outs of farm ticks isn't incredibly important for your macro efficiency, since if you just do one fruit tree run and two regular tree runs a day, you'll get 99 in Sumermill farming long before you finish your other skills either way. However, it is pretty useful information, so I would encourage you guys to check it out if you want to learn more. Another thing that's important to understand is whether or not you should pay for your trees while doing your tree runs. In most cases these days it's actually not worth it to pay for your trees, but an easy way to calculate it is if the tree payment costs one eighth or less the cost of the seed price, then it's worth paying for, otherwise it's not. The reason for this is because when you super compost your trees they have a one in eight chance of dying, and so on average one tree in every eight trees you plant will die. So if the payment cost is one eighth or less to the seed, then it's worth it. If it's any more, then it makes farming more expensive, and it doesn't really matter that much if you're getting slightly more experience for paying for the trees. It comes out in the wash because either way, you're going to be getting lots of experience long term, and you'll be able to get 99 long before you finish your other 99s. So a couple of my trees aren't actually completely finished yet, but it would have taken another like three or four hours for them to be done. So uh, I'm just going to go ahead and do a farm run right now, and uh, a couple of them will be not... Uh, completely finished growing, but you get the same basic idea, I'll run to all the patches, and uh, I'll, get, I'll still get most of my farm run done. So, I'm just going to show you guys exactly what I do, and you can follow suit, and any teleports you don't have access to, uh, I'll try to give you guys some alternatives as we go through um, for different options, because there are plenty of options to get to a lot of the, th a lot of the different locations. Um, but I'm just going to show you guys exactly what I do, and uh, you guys can follow along, and it's, I think, pretty much the most efficient way you can do a farm run. So, I always wear graceful on my farm runs, because it's the most efficient thing to wear, because it has the uh, effect of giving you a little bit more run restoration while you're standing still or walking, so I may as well use it if you have it. Um, and pretty much the biggest struggle of farming is just remembering all the shit you need to take with you on a farm run, so uh, <laughs> good luck. Eventually uh, you'll probably pick it up. I still struggle and I have like almost 17 mil farming. Um, but basically you just take all of your trees and the rest of the items are teleports. It's good to have a rake and a spade. Rake really comes in handy, but once in a while you get like just the wrong timing so that the weeds grow on the, uh, the patch just as you clear it. Um, so it's good to have it just in case, and uh, you need all the other items for pretty much every single run. Um, so as you can see right there, I just casted Magic Imbue, and uh, that's not at all necessary for farming, it's just for a bit of extra magic XP, so if you want to do that you can, otherwise you don't need to bother taking a Steam Staff. So the first patch I usually go to is the Calquat, and unfortunately it is uh, not grown right now, it's like one cycle away from being done. Um, but yeah, do the Calquat first, you don't even have to pick the fruits from it, you can actually just dig it up as soon as it uh, is done, but you get a nice 12,000 farming XP from that, so very good. And uh, generally the order that I do my run in is just to try to get, like, to clear out as much inventory space as possible early on, so use all the tele tabs and, and use the regular trees earlier, because 
uh, for the palm trees, it's nice to have more inventory space so you don't have to be unnoting, or I mean, sorry, noting the uh, the coconuts all the time. So if you have more inventory space, it's better. So I usually save those for further into the run and uh, focus on the regular trees first. So uh, that's why I just do lumberage there. It doesn't really matter that much the order as long as you're thinking about that in general. And I always grab my daily battle staffs in Varrock. I actually had to log out because it was right after the tick. Um, so I grab my battle staves in Varrock um, while I'm doing my Varrock tree, just to save a little bit of time, um, because those are definitely worth doing if you have the Varrock diaries done, because it's a little bit of extra GP per day, so may as well, and it works quite nicely with the Varrock uh, patch right here, so pretty much the same deal for this one, it's actually grown, unlike the last one, it was dead, but happens sometimes. So you just take the tree, pay the farmer to uh, take it down for you, because chopping it down wastes a whole bunch of time, and there's just not really any point in doing that, and uh, quick and easy knock it on to the next patch. So the next one is Taverly, and uh, the best way to get there is with the Taverly tab. Um, if you can't get the house like redirection things, you can just put your house in Taverly and use a regular house tab. Other than that, you can also use the balloon. If you teleport to Castle Wars, there's a balloon like right south of this if you have the um, Enlightened Journey quest done, which is nice. You can see it off in the corner in the distance there. Um, and otherwise, I guess you could probably just teleport to Falador if you really need to. Um, but yeah, not extremely difficult to get those uh, teleports. And I use a Ring of Wealth to get to Falador. This just saves like a little bit of time over Falador Teleport. It puts you right in the Falador Park, so you may as well if you have them. Not at all necessary if you don't feel like buying Rings of Wealth. And in that case, just use Falador Tabs or Falador Teleport. And the same deal once again, uh, using the Fertile Soil and everything like that. And at this point, I switch on to the uh, uh, Fruit Trees, starting off with Brimhaven, because uh, you can use up the tab there and get one more inventory space open. So the Brimhaven Fruit Tree is a little bit north of the Teleport spot. If you can't use the uh, house portal here, then you probably want to teleport to Ardoin, or uh, you could work it in with your Cathary patch probably. Take charter ships over to this area, or I guess from Ardoin you can just take a ship directly and not pay quite as much GP, but those would be some decent teleportation options. Uh, if you can't use the portal, definitely just use uh, the ships, and uh, with, with palm trees you just pick the things, chop it down, that's why you have the hatchet with you, and uh, move on to the next patch. And this one, unfortunately, was not grown. Uh, this is the one I was waiting on, but it got diseased, so that delayed it a lot. Um, so you use elf crystals to get to Letzia, and that's pretty much the only good way to get here. So if you have the Morning's End Part Two or Part One quest started, then you can kill elves in this area, and they drop elf crystals. So I just grab some of those, and uh, you can charge them up by talking to Eluned, who moves around the Elven Lands to a couple of different, different locations, and then. I use Slayer Rings to get to the Tree Gnome Stronghold. If you don't have Slayer Rings, then you can use either the Balloon with a Magic Log, or you can use uh, Spirit Trees and probably just go to the G and then take the Spirit Tree up there uh, over to the Gnome Stronghold. Both of those would get you there pretty much about the same time, it's just Slayer Rings slightly quicker, so that's what I tend to use. And there are actually three trees in this area, so start off with the regular tree and then you run over to the Palm Tree over here, or the Fruit Tree. Um, get this one all done. And then next up, there is one other one outside of the Trinome Village. We could, you can take the Spirit Tree right here to get over there. Uh, basically, what you want to do is just run over to the fence and go outside, and then you can follow Elkoi, and he'll take you to the outside of the maze. You do have to do the Trinome Village quest to be able to do this. Otherwise, probably take the Spirit Tree to uh, the Khazard Battlefield and then run south from there. Um, but yeah, you probably want to get Trinome Village and the Grand Tree done, and I'm suspecting that most of you guys probably already have it done if you're doing farming, at least at this level anyways. So... That's the fastest way to get to this patch, and same deal once again with the palm tree. And the last patch I usually go to is Catherby. You can just use a Catherby teleport spell if you have the magical required. I think it's like 87 magic. Um, but if you don't, then you can just as easily use a Camelot tab or Camelot teleport, and that will get you right over there and uh, much more, much lower level requirement. And that's probably the best way to get there if you don't have the Catherby teleport. So that's pretty much what my tree run looks like, and basically what I do is I do this full run once a day, and then about halfway through the day, I usually do this at night, like before I go to bed, uh, but you could just as easily do it any other time, as long as it's the same time of day, and then I do one regular tree run uh, other times because regular trees grow a lot faster than fruit trees, so I do a full fruit tree run and regular tree run, and then later I just do the magics, and that ends up getting me around like 175k XP per day on average, so that's pretty much how the best way to do farming overall, long term, is just to do that every day and uh, focus on your other skills, so... 
So hopefully you guys have all the information that you need to be doing your tree runs efficiently. There are a couple other things that people sometimes like to do for farming that aren't necessarily efficient, but I probably should still cover in this guide. So the first and uh, most popular option that is not necessarily extremely efficient is uh, doing herb runs. And basically the, people, the reason people like to do herb runs is because you can get a little bit of XP and you always profit pretty much if you're doing the right herbs. So if you were to do a Renara run, which requires pretty low farming, somewhere in the 30s, to plant Renara weeds, um, you can farm them every 80 minutes. They have 20 minute growth cycles and they have four of them. Um, and you make around 150k profit per run and it takes maybe five minutes to do an herb run. So it, it does add up to be pretty nice profit. So if you want to be looking to make a little bit of money from farming, you can do that. Overall, in terms of time efficiency, it's still not really worth it to do herb runs because you get very little EHP, and it'd be better to just do runecrafting for that money. You'd be making close to as much off of runecrafting, and uh, you'd be getting EHP for that time rather than not getting pretty much any since farming EHP is very high. So yeah, t right now, Renars are the most profitable herb to farm. You can also do Snapdragons, which are close and a lot better experience, and if you want to get the most experience out of your herbs, you can do uh, Torstils at level 85 farming. And you can get around 10 to 15k XP per run, which does add up over time, it's just that it's not extremely time efficient because spending 5 minutes to only get 10 to 15k XP isn't exactly ideal. I'm not going to show a setup for herb runs in this video since I don't actually do herb runs and I haven't done them in a long time, but I do believe that Esk also has a video showing how he does his herb and allotment runs, uh, which I'll link in the description as well. And in addition to herbs, sometimes people do like to do allotments also. You can get some decent experience from doing uh, watermelons, which are the highest level allotment uh, patch or crop that you can grow. Um, the, the main downside really is that they're somewhat expensive and they're still pretty low experience. So the only reason that you should ever really do allotments especially, and even herbs, is really just if you want to be getting faster or, or more farming XP over time. So if you want to be going for 200 mil very quickly, you're going for 99 very quickly rather than just waiting it out and working out other skills in the meantime, then you can do that. And that's what Etsk did when he was going for 200 mil. He did it very, very quickly because he was paying very close attention to his ticks and he was doing herb runs and uh, melon runs pretty much all the time that he could. So it's a decent option, it's not overall efficient if you're thinking of doing other skills, but if your only focus is farming, then you can choose to do these. But yeah, I would definitely check out his videos if you want more information on that, because I haven't spent much time doing that, because I've really just focused on doing tree runs for the overall macro efficiency. So guys, that's all I got for the farming guide today. Hope you all enjoyed it, and I hope it helps you out with your goal of getting level 99 farming, or maybe even beyond. Good luck! And uh, if you have any further questions, definitely leave them in the comment section below. And uh, check out the additional resources I have in the description. Definitely encourage that because there's a lot of good stuff there. So hopefully that will help you out as well. But yeah, any other questions, definitely leave them in the comment section. I'll do my best to respond. And um, good luck with your farming. Thanks for watching. Feel free to drop a like. And I will see you all later with more videos.